right, so <clears throat> we had fun the first session. You missed the fun. But there is, um, so now we're going to get serious on this because of Noah's flood and, and all that is about to take place. You have to go back in front of the scriptures pertaining to Noah and you find a place where <clears throat> in one translation it says this. It says, God said, I am sorry I made you. Uh, the King James is, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But that one translation really hit me because it's like, I mean, he made us, but I'm sorry that I made, I'm, I'm sorry I made you, you know. And uh, so that's in Genesis uh, 6 and verse 5 through 7. <clears throat> And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. <clears throat> and... Um, you have you have his statement first, the the one you know. I'm sorry that I made you. You know, um, you have that first, but then it begins to describe um, the the in, inner workings of the Lord. And and I'll tell y'all, that's a real big deal with me. I am always looking for the inner working of the Lord. I you know you can read the words and everything. But Jesus said, and he said of us, but he said it's true of him and of the Father, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And so, well, sometimes we say things that's really not true of ourselves or whatever, but God never does. He sa well, he says what's really in his heart. So I want to, uh, uh, but you still sometimes have to look behind the scenes a little bit. And so the first appearance here of the Lord in these scriptures is that I'm sorry, I am sorry that I made you. And, you know, and I'm going, okay, hmm, you can take that a lot of different ways. You know, you can say he's a mean God, you can say all kinds of stuff. Um, <clears throat> but in verse 6, when it says it grieved him at his heart, what he saw going on, uh, that, uh, that got me. That got to me because this is not someone who's just angry or not someone who is just uh, 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 upset at the moment or something like that. It's like, I made this and I am really sorry I did. You know. Now, we'll go back even further and we'll see that you know, it's not all God's fault in, the, in that sense. Man had something to do with it. But <clears throat> at this stage... Right before Noah, I thought it was important for us to begin to try to dig a little bit into the heart of the Lord and to see that, uh, first of all, I thought it was interesting that he said it grieves him at his heart. Now, I, I know, you know, I know, like, as just a human being, I know what it's like to, you know, dislike that somebody did something or to, um, uh, to maybe get angry over something or stuff like that. But this was a heart thing with the Lord. This grieved him to his heart. And uh, so it's like, you know, what it did to me is when I go into the Noah story, then it made me, um, it made me try to be more sensitive to his heart. I want to know now what's going on with you because he's referring to the heart. And you all know, most of you have been around me and my teaching. I talk a lot about the heart. I do that because I, in the scriptures, and, you know, I have really found, you know, the heart mentioned a lot. The issues of life come out of the heart and uh, things like that. And, um, and I've realized that God is uh, tremendously moved by his heart. Tremendously moved by that. 
So if you, if you really, really become aware of that, you'll just notice the scriptures just popping out to you going, wow, you know, this isn't just bad. This is because we tend to think, OK, well, he's like me. So no wonder he's upset. <laughs> but It's not like oh, that right, at all. Right. You know, it's not that at all. And um, and it grieved him at his heart. It grieved him at his heart. <laughs> so uh, and then verse 11, the earth also was corrupt before him and the earth was filled with violence and God looked upon the earth and behold it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth so I want to uh, I'm, I'm going to deal with this a little later and maybe not tonight but this thing about uh, it, in these uh, two verses it uses the word corrupt or corrupted three times. Mm. And that's, I think that's a big, that must be a big deal there. Uh, <clears throat> because it's funny because it primarily is using, um, now it has several different things, but it's primarily referring to man has corrupted and then I noticed it, his way. And I always read that as Man has corrupted his own way. Mm. And then I realized we've corrupted God's way. Oh. Okay, that should grieve us to our heart. Mm -hmm. You know, you see that and you realize, oh my gosh. You know, uh, but there's that and that that's a big part because it keeps coming up as a theme, uh, for, especially in the beginning of this. And then the other one is, and I thought it interesting, was violence, um, filled with violence. The one, that's verse 11. Uh, and uh, where is it? Anyway, there's another verse that he mentions that. And I, it's like, huh. Um, it, didn't, it didn't really hone in and say man was just flat out sinful. You know, like the ways we think of, you know, like, you know, all the sins that we would say, oh, that's really, you know, the, what is it, the, the, yeah, is that what it is? I was, I was going deadly, I was going, is that really what it is? And, but anyway, yeah, um, looking towards something outwardly that we could go, oh, that's wrong. Um, uh, you just start going, you know, so much he's saying we've corrupted his way. So we're going to come back to that later and maybe not tonight. Um, and then uh, let me read verse 11 again, verse 11 and 12. The earth was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence and God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And um, it's almost like when God said, uh, I am sorry that I made man, it's almost like if you look at it from a heart thing, what if that to him was like the end of a dream? You know, this is, this is it with this, you know. We'll, we'll move on with the ones that come into the ark, the ones who, who seek out the environment, if you will, the ones who hear my voice in relationship to... This is going to be the means that I use. Um, but as far as everything else, it's like an end of a dream for me. You know, There's no need keeping it around. It's nothing like what I had in my heart. It's nothing like what was important to me. You know, I just hear that from the Lord. You know, There's nothing left. I mean, it's the way that they have gone has totally corrupted my way. And so they've, you know... You know, the word sin means to miss, miss the mark. Yeah. You know, in the Greek, that's the word. To miss the mark. Well, that's funny because, you know, we call, we say, and that's the actual word. It's not sin misses the mark. The mm -hmm. word sin means missing the mark. Yeah. So that means that what God is calling sin, he's simply saying you've missed you, you, you've, you know, there's a, a mark, a target that I wanted you to hit and you've missed it. 
we go, well, you know, well, that's all the bad, evil sin. But he's going, no, whatever, you know, so let's go to the Lord. Let's see the Lord in that from the Father's perspective. If Christ in you is the hope of the Father's glory, the hope of the Father's, his hope um, in us, then to miss Christ being formed in us, to simply become a Christian, to simply become uh, believers, you know, and what is a Christian? Well, we're, we, we believe a bunch of stuff. Well, it's got to be more than that. Amen. <laughs> it's got to be more than that. You know, um, so we could say, well, you know, I believe a bunch of stuff and God sees that as an arrow go, veering off, missing the mark. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And, um, and what would be worse to the Father than if his plan always was the tree of life? to eat of it, and that tree representing the cross and representing the life of Christ, Um, then everything that doesn't find that mark, that doesn't find that tree, which they never ate of it, remember? They never did. Uh, Is in his heart, notice the word heart, in his heart is missing the mark. But then, now let's reverse that and look at it from his perspective as he looks down on those that that are saying, Father, I want your son. I want him formed in me. I don't want me anymore. I want more of him and less of me. He must increase and I must decrease. Um, We may say that because we see what's wrong with us. You know what I mean? We see our failures and everything. And then we go, "I, I, you know, but imagine if we're saying that because we're saying because that's that's the mark that you set before us. That's the one you want us to hit, you know. And I want the sun in me to increase and me to decrease. It's kind of a reversal of this. We're uncorrupting our way by making him our way. Isn't that cool, though, mm-hmm. to think of that? It can actually happen. And the greater thing is not just the, the decrease of corruption called us or whatever, but the increase of the father getting his son, mm-hmm. the one who said, that's my target, that's what's in my heart. Uh, and so, so the other way is to corrupt his way and grieve him at his heart. But that would mean that if we hit that mark, we're okay. pleasing his heart. Amen. I mean, to the highest. Because, I mean, I, what's the opposite of grieving? What's, what would the word be? Rejoicing. What is it? Rejoicing. Rejoicing, is it? I guess, yeah. Okay, yeah. what else? Yeah. 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 Just overjoyed. And can you imagine us working with him? Yes. Mm-hmm. And he's going, they want it. <laughs> you know, just like this generation didn't want it. Right. They actually want the son. They actually don't just want him as their religious figure, mm-hmm. but as their life. And for him to be pleased. What's it called in Ephesians? The good pleasure of God. His good pleasure. His good pleasure. So, so with it going this way, the, the, the corrupting of his way, the corrupting of his target, the corrupting of what, who, you know, it's in a form, it's corrupting God, not in that he's really corrupted, but we're corrupting the true light of his being by making it something other than the, the target that he has and the, the, the thing in his heart. For example, that target would be the son, but the person who desires that would be the father. I mean, try reading the Gospel of John in light of father and son, and your mind will be blown away. Mm-hmm. You know, this would be fun if anybody wants to try this one. Just get you, you know, I I don't know what it's like in other countries, but, you know, in our country, you can go to a half-price bookstore or used bookstore and pick up a cheap Bible for almost nothing. They even have Gospel of John only. Get that and just go through with a highlighter and mark every time it says Father or Son. And when you get through, just do this. And you're going to go, oh, my God. You're going to realize it's consumed with this reality that it's the Father that wants us, 
His son, his son. And it's a son who, you know, no man knoweth the father but the son. Okay, I've, I've used this example before, but if the son had a neighbor, his same age, and they're two sons, but this one's the son of this father, and he says to the other son, um, do you know my father? He would probably say, yeah, I see him or da, 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 but he doesn't know his father. Only a son can know the father like that. Okay. And because we're using the example of a son because he's talking about Christ as the son. And, that, and, and that's the son in us. That's the son in us. That's got to be the son. It's not, in other words, it's, uh, I think you could look at this in this way. We have the son that the father wants in us, but we are like the neighbor kid. Mm-hmm. The son knows the father mm-hmm. unto whom he will reveal him. Mm-hmm. That's the ones that that bear him, that 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 have exchanged themselves, can I put it like that? Yes. For him, for another yes. life. Said, so not I. Yeah, that's an exchange, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Not I. I'm I'm up for not I. And he's yes. going, the father's going, this is crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, that other generation totally corrupted my way. And these guys are like John the Baptist. They're making a way for him in the earth. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay. So what I've just said is not a sermon. <laughs> it's not a teaching. This is the way it actually is in the heart of the father right now. Amen. And that's the view that he has with his son. And if we can get past a teaching and it hits us, I mean, I would have been knocked against the wall here if I could have to show you, it hits you and you go, this isn't just Randy's teaching. This isn't just a place or this or that. This literally is the father and his son and this is what he wants. And then, and then we could lift up our faces, as it were, and look into the father's heart and in this story, look there and see him grieve at his heart because they corrupted his way. And in our story, say, I want to reverse that grieving that you're having to live with as we continue to corrupt our way, Amen. your way. I mean. mm-hmm. And I want to be a part of that. I want, I want to be in that flow mm-hmm. of that river of life, you know. So anyway, um, so he says the end, you know, for all flesh hath corrupted his way. So the end of all flesh. Um, And I said the end of his desire, the end of his dream. But as you know, the end of his dream actually happened before this. Okay, get ready. Mm-hmm. The end of his dream happened only two chapters before this, when there was only two people on the planet. Mm-hmm. And they chose the one thing he said, don't eat of. Mm-hmm. You know, eat of the tree of life, eat of anything else, but don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. <clears throat> and, um, so what is that a manifestation of? So this is serious to us. What was that original failure? Because even though when Adam and Eve ate, that was the, that was the end of the dream in truth. It didn't manifest until all of mankind that came forth began to corrupt his way. That's, but that's just the manifestation. That's not the end. The end happened with Adam and Eve. And so, um, but Adam and Eve, the end came by what? The end came by a very simple thing. Just seeking. You were seeking, they were seeking, just seeking deep knowledge over life, the tree of life. 
Tree of knowledge of good and evil. Tree of life. Satan says, eat of this and you shall be as God. I want to be like God. Amen? We want, you know, we say that. I want to be like God. Well, okay, how about we want his image formed in us. We want his life, his nature formed in us. That's different. One is one can run the run the lanes of of deep knowledge and of uh, because that's what the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was presented as by the enemy. This you know God doesn't God knows that if you do this you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. You'll be able to know things that you couldn't know. Just follow after deep teaching and deep truth. You know he's he's over here. He's probably has their back turned to the tree of life. <laughs> I'm telling you guys. I mean, is there anything else in there better than this tree? Back's turned to the tree of yeah. life so they can't see it, you know. And they start to turn and it goes, and, you know, you know how that works, you know. Slide a hand, you know, keep them, keep them uh, distracted. Sleazy car salesman. <laughs> Sleazy car salesman. If you've ever experienced it, it's bad. But anyway, it is. <laughs> You know, I mean, because it's, it is, it is the big, it is the presentation of a way that's going to corrupt his way. It's going to corrupt his way, and so we're, you know, we're going. Well, I want to be like God. I mean, Christian, you know, it sounds right. Everything about it sounds right, except it leaves out the fact that he's it. What he's what it's about. He's mm-hmm. it. And we're going to be it. Now I'm, oh, my stature is going to grow. My understanding is going to be deeper. I'm going to have, you know, all of this stuff. Yeah, but one bite. And it's like, okay, now you're stuck because now that's the way you're going to think. And everybody that comes after you is going to think that way. Higher is better. Uh, more is greater. Uh, all, of, all of that kind of thinking instead of lamb life that says, I'll die so that they can, so they'll be okay. I'll, I'll you know, that whole spirit of Jesus, that, that lamb way that can fill us and the Father looks and says, that is not only not corrupting my way, that is the target. Mm-hmm. He is the way. Hmm. He is the truth. Mm. He is the life. He is your peace. He is your hope. And just this, all the scriptures go on. He is the true vine. He is all of this. Making it all of those things, not something on a tree outside of us, not something outside of us, but making it Christ within us. How will we know the joy, you know, how will we know the joy, the rejoicing? How will we know the joy of the Father over getting His Son in that way out of one person? I think I talked about it recently, but consider, what is it, 2 Corinthians 3, 6, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Yeah, verse 7. And what is it saying? He's saying, he's not just saying Jesus is the treasure, he's saying this treasure is in an earthen vessel and it's that together that's really a treasure to me. He didn't just say, I want Jesus back at the right hand, my right hand, without any thought of you. Mm-hmm. You know, we're part of that. Right. Now, we're, just, we're the container that holds it. He's the beauty of it. But he wants us. He, he did, you, know, I, you know, I'm sorry that I made man. I'm sorry that I made you. But then wow. he, he's got us and we're, it's Christ in us and he must increase and we're decreasing and we're walking that path and he's going I am happy I made you You, this com- combination is a treasure to me praise God, praise God. Yeah. so 
All right, how does that break with common everyday Christianity? Common everyday Christianity says, well, be involved, you know, go to church, uh, do this, you know, read your Bible, um, uh, you know, give money, um, you know, I, you know, the rigmarole. Excuse me, but it's just a rigmarole if it's not by life. Yeah. It's just a religion that has certain things set up. And if you do this, you're everything God wants. <clears throat> that mark goes off. It, the arrow goes off and misses the mark because it's not the Son. It's not about the Son. To, it is, everything is about the Son to the Father. <laughs> I mean, that's what's important is heart. So, I wrote, to know as God knows without the life. Mm. Yes. Or how about this? Mm. The knowledge of good and evil doesn't give us the way to handle things that we know. We so uh, to know as God knows without the life to handle it. Wow. Okay. Well, you say, well, what's that? All right, man. I wish I could think of. I could, there's a million things that you could go through with this right here, but it would be um, uh, someone uh, someone does you wrong, and you know good and evil, so you know that they did wrong. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, your conclusion is, they're wrong, which means, I'm right. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say it differently. They're evil, I'm good. Same tree. It's the same tree, same roots. Mm -hmm. You know, if you point at somebody and you say, evil, 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 and you say, good, 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 and God's saying, I didn't want you in the first place. <laughs> I didn't want anybody eating that stuff. You're just living proof of it. Okay, now let's put the lamb in us. And let's say that we still have the ability to see good and evil. But now we have a nature and a life within us. We look and we say, evil, I'm going to die for you so that you might be blessed. Amen. What a difference that is. It's a big difference here with God because man got the ability to see what's right and wrong but didn't get the life as to know how to handle these situations so we handle them wrong because we handle them by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we're ruined. We're ruined. We're corrupted is a better word. We're corrupted because we've corrupted His way and His way is this okay so Jesus says I am the way the truth and the life no man comes to the father but by me right I am the way so we go he's the way you know Jesus take my hand I'll take your hand because I'm the way follow me Mm. to the father wrong that's not what he's talking about he's talking about the cross He is. He's talking about, I, look, the only way to get you to the Father is we're going to have to go through the cross. Mm-hmm. He, there is no getting to the Father apart from the cross. Oh, amen. Right? Amen. There, is, amen. there isn't. And so you go with Him. I am crucified with Christ, but guess what? Now Christ is your life. Now you're, you're, you've been sanitized. Yeah. <laughs> It's the sun now. Yeah. You've been sanitized by the sun. Yes, and it's not you. It's not your brilliance of knowing what's right and wrong. It's not right. you with your uh, uh, high uh, attitude of yourself or high expectations of yourself. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can, you know, you can live in self-righteousness or self-pity. They're both wrong to God. Oh. It's self. Amen. Say, well, they just live in self-pity all the time. Well, you live in self-righteousness all the time. You know? you know? <laughs> okay, I will. Okay. 
<laughs> she, after I went like this, I noticed she hit both right there. <laughs> <coughs> All right, so this really is a big deal. Can you see how this this would be a big deal mm-hmm. to understand the knowledge of good and evil to have that view and of course then with a corrupt nature, a fallen nature, then we're going to use that to make ourselves look better and and anybody that might be coming up and look start looking like a threat to us we want to make them, or automatically the knowledge of evil, the evil on that side of the tree mm-hmm. will make them look bad. Mm-hmm. Because we've got a corrupt nature yeah. that's guiding that information yes. instead of the Lamb of God. Amen. Okay, But the Lamb can handle either one. Right. Good or evil, he's, he's going to lay down his life. He's going to be selfless in, in whatever. And that's going to be what pleases the Father. And, and after all, folks, when it's all said and done, the only thing that's going to be worth anything is that which pleases God. It's not going to be, you know, oh, I handled that situation real well. Because he'll look at it and go, no, you didn't. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> that was the worst, you know. What do you mean it was the worst? It was one of the main things I was going to bring up to you when I had to stand before you was that, you know. And he's just going to go, that's, you know, it's sad you missed the mark your whole life because you you missed the lamb, you missed the son and his nature and his spirit. So verse 12 says, all flesh had corrupted his way. Oh my God, guess what? The word all is there. Mm. That that means Noah. Mm. Mm. Wow. Right? I mean, you have to admit it. You have to do this. These are things you, that you, you don't lean one way or the other. You go with the Lord and the Word of God and you say, shut up. That says all. And this in, must include Noah. And that's why in verse 8 it says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Yeah. Oh my God, my God. Did you know that you can corrupt His way but find grace? And then be brought into Christ, into through the storm, through Him, resting in Him. Amen, amen. So, grace. He found. He found grace. Noah found it. Noah found grace. Where do you find it? In the eyes. Praise God. Have you ever noticed how you can find grace in someone's eyes? You know, I had a real mean stepfather and and uh, he was an alcoholic. And so, you know, we would uh, we never knew what what was good with him and what wasn't. We could be sitting on the floor talking and he's sitting there in his chair and we say something and, and he would he had a big old ring and he would just whack us across the, across the head and I mean it hurt and so we never knew when that was going to hit so even when we said something okay or whatever it was always we were always like this For, it took me years to get over that you know somebody go and I go you know and I guess I got over it when I was in the army. <laughs> I started dealing back a little bit, but anyway. Um, so you know, uh, uh, but but maybe there was a situation when he was drunk and I said something wrong, and I got ready to be hit, and I looked up, and his eyes said grace. They didn't say. Evil. They didn't say punishment. They didn't say judgment. They said grace. Oh, thank God. You know? Oh, thank God. We're told in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, to be able to look into his face and to be changed into that same image from one glory to another. Another scripture came to my mind, and it's um, Hebrews chapter 2. 
And if you want to look there, you can. It's Hebrews chapter 2, verse 7. Yeah, Hebrews uh, 2, 7, and we'll look to 7 through 9. <clears throat> There's a, it looks like a conundrum here, but I believe that when you understand God, when you understand His heart, when you understand the Father toward His Son, or the son toward his father, you you realize that um, a word that I use a lot sparingly, but if you listen, you'll hear me use it. It's the word orientation. And the short version of that is that um, humans have an orientation that is up. We want to go up. We want to be greater. We want to be smarter. We want to have more. We want this and that. Everything is, we want to have a good life, we want this and that. His orientation is down. Um, and his and that means that, okay, so let's use an example of this. Jesus is up, okay, he's God and everything, but he comes down. And he does that because of his nature, okay? His nature is that, but he's God and so... Uh, So this scripture starts with, Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownedest him with glory and honor. Thou didst set him over the works of thy hands. Um, So you see that he's made a little lower than the angels. And then we see thou crownedest him with glory and honor. uh, And we assume that that is strictly um, the resurrection. But what if, and I'm, I'm, even if you, you don't, figure it here in the scripture, I'm using it because you have these two things written together. What if, uh, you know, let's just think about uh, John uh, 20, John 12, 23, 22 and 23 says, you know, Jesus knows that he's about to be crucified. Okay. And he says, now is the son of man glorified. And he's talking about his death. And he says, except this corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it'll bring forth much fruit. Mm-hmm. So he's like a seed. He's like the only seed of his kind. Because he was. There was no other seed like Jesus. And he's like a seed. And he says, I'm like a seed. And, I, and as a seed, there can be no more of me as a seed unless I'm put in the ground and die. Okay. You know, some let's say someone had a seed that there was no other like it, and they took that seed and they said, "Huh, wonder how it tastes." <laughs> well, that's the end of that. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But try sticking it in the ground and seeing what we can get. Okay, so Jesus is saying that. He's saying, "He's saying I'm the only of this seed. If there's ever going to be any true seed." It's going to have to be my nature within that seed. Because a, an apple tree brings forth apples, lemon tree brings forth lemons, and a Jesus tree brings forth His nature within us. Okay? Um, because they bring forth after their kind. Right? That's the original thing that God did when He made everything. This will bring forth after its kind. He made this, it will bring forth after its kind. So, <clears throat> so, um, he says, now is the Son of Man glorified, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. It'll abide alone. But if it dies, it'll bring forth much fruit. He's going, I am going to be glorified by giving myself selflessly. This is where glory is, he would say. We would say, God, deliver me, save me, do a miracle, get me out of this. I don't want to die. Right? Wrong orientation. Instead of saying, let your son come forth and let's deal with this in the manner that your son will deal with this. Um, We have an escapism attitude. We want to be uh, free. You know, and and we, here's the deal. I mean, I I don't have time to go off on all this, but I'm going to just say this. In the story of the Exodus, 
you have uh, what's called ten plagues, but they're really only nine plagues. They all relate to miracles. They're all a miracle. That, you know, there's, there's all these things that God is quote-unquote doing to free them, to get them free. And he, he does them, but we say, well, why did you do all the miracles then if you don't want us to believe in miracles? Well, the last one was kill a lamb. <laughs> Eat the lamb put its blood on the doorpost and I'll be happy <laughs> and you'll be free. That's the way he thinks. That's the way he is. But we say, you know, why did Jesus do all those miracles? Why did the God, you do this miracle here? Why did you, you know, why did you, as soon as you got out in the wilderness and there was no water, you know, why did you take a, th- a tree and throw it in the water and all of a sudden the water is pure because that represents the tree of life. Mm-hmm. But we don't see the tree of life. We see the miracle. Mm-hmm. And we go, oh man, keep, keep the miracles coming, Moses. Yeah. You know? We miss the, the life. We miss the tree of life because we're so busy looking at the miracles and the mm-hmm. things that's going to be better. Mm-hmm. Better orientation for me. So... Um, well, let's move on from here. Verse 8, uh, we're still in Hebrews 2. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all things in subjected under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. Okay, so that's literally saying that right now everything is under Jesus' feet. Is that right or wrong? Right now it is. Right? I mean, I need to get a full agreement here. Is everybody yes. agree with that? Everything is under his feet. And there's nothing that is not under his feet that is not under subjection to him. Then why does it say the next part of that verse? But now we see not yet all things under him, but we see Jesus who's made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor in the suffering of death, that he, by the grace of God, should taste of death for every man. So what is it saying? It's saying... And uh, he has this power. He has this glory. He has all of these things under subjection, under his feet. But that's not the one he wants us to see. Amen. Now, that's crazy because that's the one all every Christian I know I was trying to see. Right? Yeah. Okay, then I have to look at the scriptures. I have to be real. And I have to say, but now... Even though it's true, you know, I I have to go through my little phase. But now, even though it's true that everything is under subjection to him, you want me to see a crucified Jesus still? Yeah. You know? The one that's lower? Yeah. Lower than the angels? Why? Why? Give me the glorified, powerful Jesus. Let me see him. Well, we don't see it because you look out here, you see all kind of corruption, you see all kind of crime, you see all kind of, you know, stuff that's not Christ all the time. And yet, it's all under his feet, right? It's all under his feet. And every Christian is saying, I want to, you know, let's pray that all this will, you know, that, that will have revival and it'll put it all under his feet. Right. Where's revival in the New Testament? You know, I mean, you know, yeah. Where's the cross in the New Testament? Yeah, it's there. So, so this is saying, no. Instead of seeing all things under his feet, we see him under their feet, if you will, or made lower, mm-hmm. crowned with glory and honor crowned with glory and honor in the heart of the Father. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. That by the grace of God should taste of death. What? The grace of God? Death? No, the grace of God is that we avoid death. The grace of God is that He does a miracle and so we, we have everything subjected to us that we look like Conquerors. I love that scripture says we're more than conquerors. Because we go, well, that means that I'm even better than a conqueror. No, no, no. To, yeah. 
Jesus. <laughs> I'm a super conqueror. Perfect. You know? <laughs> no, no. You read the scriptures around it and you'll see it's not talking about that. It is all, it's this whole spirit of, uh, of, um, being sent forth as sheep for the slaughter. Romans 8. We're going, what? Well, we go, why would God send us like sheep for a slaughter? You know? Um, because we have a lamb spirit in us. Because death and his kind of death and his death is the only thing that's going to really change anything. All the revivals in the world won't ultimately change. And Amen. this is just something. I did this when I, oh, I was probably, that's when I was a missionary. And uh, <clears throat> I started, they had a bunch of books there on uh, on revival. So I started reading about all these revivals. And wow, some of them were just amazing, amazing. And then I started reading up on the history after those revivals. And I found out that the places got really dark afterwards because the enemy goes, hey, there's light over here, let's get them. You know? <laughs> and then you're over here hanging on a tree in, in darkness and he's going, ah, don't worry about that. <laughs> you know? Because he's, he's, he's still trying to stamp out uh, the light when Jesus as it were, became darkness, if you understand what I mean. He who knew no sin was made to be sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. When he hangs there, whether 2,000 years ago or gives himself now, many times it doesn't look like a victory. It doesn't look like it's of God. It doesn't look like it's that same thing over and over and over. But it is, it is God. It's more than that. It's the Father getting his Son. And it's a sweet savor to the Father. That's what it says in what, 1 Corinthians 2, 2 Corinthians. Anyway, that we would be a sweet savor of Christ Amen. unto God, unto the Father. So the last part, that he by the grace of God should taste death. <laughs> End of verse 9. That he by the grace of God should taste of death. And then we, we say, this is the grace of God that I'm in this situation. See, we're always fighting the situations. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, well, this is... And we're doing it with the tree of knowledge, good and evil. Well, to me, this is the evil. Because this ain't making me happy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's also robbing me of something, you know. Well, you know, Jesus never got robbed. He was a sacrifice. Living sacrifice that became a giving sacrifice. So they're not robbing him, you know. He's not hanging on the cross going, that's my coat. (laughs) You know, give it back, you know. My my God will get you, you know. All this junk. I mean, there's so much junk in Christianity. It's all based on the name of the Lord, you know. By the grace of God, tasted of death. And by that same grace, we can handle everything in life by that Spirit. And we can see true change, or we can just be like everyone else. Okay, non Christian, how would he handle this? The same way we're doing it. Well, this is wrong, I want that, you're stealing that from me, and this ain't right, and 911, get them. You know? You know, wrong spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, Jesus said, if somebody takes your coat, give them your cloak. I'm going, great, I don't have a cloak. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I said in my, my earlier days. But that's his, you, yeah. I want you to see his spirit. Yeah, yeah. yeah his way and his, his heart. And, and, uh, and he says, if you do that, your reward in heaven will be great. Okay, so we go, Man, I bet I'm going to get a lot of coats. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I gave my coat away that time. And I bet you they're going to be really like Armani's and stuff like that. You know, <laughs> Just the best stuff. No. Reward in heaven is the Father is going to say, you didn't corrupt my way in the earth. You, you know, and I noticed that it says that in one of the places, you corrupted my way in the earth. 
And I went, oh, God, see, it's down here you want us to live this way, this truth, this life that is Christ. And instead of corrupting it and going the way of the world, just that's the way any old person would handle it, you know. So, what time did we start, Kelly? Um, we started... You're never the one to ask. Lindsay, what, how much? Ten minutes to get ten minutes. See, when I was, I have to, I have to tell you, because there's a person like you in uh, in Arkansas. His name's Jimmy Ned, <laughs> and Jimmy. So I'm up there teaching, and I had gone 45 minutes, but I, you know me, I lose. I, I mean, you I'm not. Go. I do. I, I'm not aware at all, and so that's why I asked. So I said uh, I couldn't even see Jimmy. He was back in, you know, the sound booth and he's covered up, you know. And I said, how much time do I have left? (laughs) And this arm goes up with a number and it says 45. I'd already gone 45 minutes and he goes 45. And I said, I'm pretty sure that I don't have 45 minutes left. And so finally I see his little head peek up and I said, Jimmy, tell me the truth. And the little thing goes up uh, five minutes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay um, so uh, verse 13 Genesis 6 back to Genesis and we'll be wrapping this up here pretty quick um, <clears throat> starting with verse well just verse 13 here and God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh. Uh, and so I, I noticed, I noticed, first of all, and this is the way I tend to, to notice things, I notice it says the end of all. All right. So I'm, I'm thinking, um, okay, so I have, <clears throat> let me just name off a few things that would be natural to people. Uh, <clears throat> I have a pride problem. I have a uh, uh, covetous problem. Uh, I, I'm enamored with money. <laughs> a bunch of this was totally not me. For those of you who don't know me, <laughs> just like I don't, I don't care. But you know, we all have something. <clears throat> the end of all. What if the cross was the end of all? You didn't have to name it. You, you see what I'm saying? We don't have to, Amen. you know, name the demons before they'll come out. <laughs> we all have to do is name the things of the flesh. No, we don't even have to name them. It's the end. The cross is the end of all flesh, period. So if we sit around and we go, you know, I've got this problem. and Oh, no, it came up again. And, oh, God, you got to deal with that. And I'm, I'm just really wanting to be with you, but I'm still, you know, letting it, I'm still living for self, but, you know, just, just, and that's a lot of times, see, we're not even talking about the cross. Just deal with it. Just deal with it. He's going, I've already dealt with it. You ever ever noticed Jesus on the cross before (laughs) as a theme? But we, but we do that, you know. Lord, you know, we're so sincere, and you know where I got this from? Me. I, I would go down to the altars. I mean, when I was in Bible school, my God, I was down at the altar all the time, and I didn't know as much as I do now. But I would pray, and I'd say, Lord, I hate this in me, and it's not you, and I do want you, and I ask you to just deal with it, you know. And and you know, he could have just said. The end of all flesh. The cross, the end of all flesh. And I I could have said, well, what about? And he'd go, yeah, yeah. Well, what about this? Yeah, yeah, that too. Well, what about what's so-and-so? Yeah. I said all. <laughs> yeah, all? All means what? All. You know? But certainly not. Okay, yeah, right, because we're going to keep on going unless we really realize that the cross is the only answer. It is the only answer. 
<clears throat> so then it's then I would step over into all flesh. End of all flesh, okay. Yeah. I believe all, it's the end of all. It's mm-hmm. meant to bring forth Christ. Mm-hmm. So the end of all flesh has come before me. Mm-hmm. He was grieved at his heart. He's going, yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. This grieved him so much, he's going, this is, Amen. it's come before me. This is, you know, since it can't be reversed, we're going to have to put it into the ground and bring up something different. Mm-hmm. Wow. Or put it into the water and, mm-hmm. you know. The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled. And there's that word again, violence, through them. Violence, through them. Violence, through them. What, what, um, how, how do we identify violence through them? Well, we can say, um, hey, that's mine. You know, uh, you, you, let's say you leave, um, let's say you leave your Bible in the church. And then somebody walks up and it says on the front of the Bible, this Bible belongs to Jesus. <laughs> Property, of Jesus. Property of Jesus. There it is. <laughs> there it is. I saw that the other day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Property of Jesus. Property of Jesus. <clears throat> but what if it didn't have any name or anything identifiable and it was yours and a, a month later you saw somebody walking around with your Bible? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's my Bible. That's my favorite Bible. That's the one that's got all my notes and all my markings and everything in it. Give it to me. <laughs> okay, don't be violent here. <laughs> but you know, there can be violence in our tone. We are, we think, you know, well, I don't go around and, you know, with a machete and you know, wound everybody walking down the street, you know. Um, no, this is talking about that violence of of possession yeah. and that yeah. violence of you know all that, all that that in, entails through them, and it was everybody. So I don't see a picture of mass humanity in one big room that is so crowded they can barely breathe, and each of them fighting. Right. <laughs> He's not looking at the earth and seeing that. He's looking at us and seeing how we deal with things, little things, but things that are flesh, that don't matter ultimately, you know, because it's not in Christ. And it's not in the Father's heart. So what the heck am I doing? Why am I making such a big deal out of this? You know? And those are lessons to be learned in a, in a total environment because in the environment, you know, you don't want people just taking and using your stuff. It's not a commune. And we'll get into that. You don't want that. But everyone needs to have that spirit of giving and whatever. And you say, well, you can have it. You know, I, that's fine. The Lord will give me. I've had, Trust me, I've had that happen. I had some of the best stuff for years and years and years on my iPad. And something happened and it all got erased. And I went, I don't know how long, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, just like, oh my God. I mean, like your life's work up to that point for a long, long time, just went, oh my God. And then slowly it began to get hold of me, the life of the Lord and the way of the Lord. And I said, you know, you gave every bit of that. <clears throat> what was life of that? is still life in me. And what wasn't, if there's those areas you need to go back over again, then go back over again. But my life is not in the notes, but in the one who gave it to me. And the Holy Spirit can bring the remembrance and I'm going to be with Him and I'm going to have a right spirit. And and so then I just began to thank Him for doing Thank you for doing this. You exposed stuff in me that I didn't know was in there. You know, and uh, and I'm... Believe it or not, I'm glad that it only took me about 30 minutes to get over because that kind of stuff can really get to you, really get to you. And during that 30 minutes, I'm going, well, maybe I can do this or maybe this or that. I can, you know, you know, I'm thinking of all these ways to, 
make it come back. But see, we would say the devil's stealing, stealing the word of God. And I said, this wasn't the devil. This is my father. Deb? Before you had an iPad, we were in Mexico and our van got broken too. And they stole all of your notes of the Lord. Someone broke in, stole all of your notes you'd written in the Lord. From the beginning to that yes. point. And you, were, you, gave, you blessed them. Well, and remember, remember in Mardi Gras, we had, we were down there in Mardi Gras, and we all went to eat or something. Anyway, we left the van, and it was full of our instruments. Kelly had a very, very, very expensive saxophone. Uh, all of us did you know, instruments and stuff that you know uh, we had in that thing, and they broke into it and took every ounce of it. So we come walking back, and you know there was fifteen, twenty of us at least, and we look and we go, oh my God. Everything of everyone is gone. And I said, y'all tell me if I didn't say this. I said, let's not let him steal it from us. Let's give it. Let's pray. Right. We got in the big circle. I said, Lord, we just give them this and praise God. And thank you for those Bibles. May they just be like, like dynamite to them. May they just come alive to them. And may they grow in your spirit and your image and and Father, may these instruments find their way in the hands of someone who, when they touch it, they sense your presence and they want to they want to serve you and they want to you know if they play that instrument they want to play it for you and and so Father, we will not be robbed, we will not be stolen from. We give it all away to them right now. We bless them. We bless you guys. Enjoy it. Hope it helps in some fun in that fashion. Did we not do that? Yes. We did that. We did it instantly. instantly. <clears throat> and um, and then we all fell on the ground and cried. <laughs> Not really, we didn't. All right, I need to stop. Uh, let me do this little thingy here. Well, I'll do it right there. Amen. Yes. It's okay if I say something. Yes, of course. Um, just when you were talking about the um, like how it grieved the Lord to His heart, and He you know, that they had corrupted his way. But, um, you know, like it can be reversed. And I just thought of, like, the Levites and how they came to be the Levites because they were deep, deeply an offense to the Lord. They were. And their prophecy in Genesis 49 was like, I am to stay away from them. Mm -hmm. There's instruments of cruelty in their habitations and just, like, and they, they slaughtered men, and it was bad. It was. And, um, and the Lord was, like, against them. Really, that prophecy was mm -hmm. really against them. But when the golden calf incident happened, and then Moses said, who's on the Lord's side? The Levites were the ones who stood up, and they had no right. They, had, they did not. They, they did not. They weren't like great, like, oh yeah, well, we're the ones. Right. No, they did that for the Lord. From their heart. From mm -hmm. their heart to say, we are going to bless the Lord and we're going to reverse that. Mm -hmm. You know, in that sense, like, mm -hmm. we're, yes, it has been corrupt to this very moment, but we, we're getting on the Lord's side. And they touched his heart. Mm -hmm. They reached him. And I liked what you said about how, how he had to put him to death and bring up something new because. The, I mean, the, they were priests. Like he did bring up something new out of that, an entire line of of them offering it. I don't know. So it was like it just it, he, they they touched his heart be, because they reversed it because they touched his heart. And then after they touched his heart, after God, after they'd done that, and so the event is over, and now they are the priests in the priesthood. Mm -hmm. At a certain juncture right after that, the Lord made them his firstborn. That's more than priests. Mm -hmm. They took the place of the actual firstborn that were delivered out of Egypt. Um, but they, at first, they, the firstborn came out and they didn't live up to the life of Christ. So he made it uh, sacrifices and offerings which don't please the Lord. So then he went, this doesn't please me. And then he even went to redemption money and stuff like that and said, this isn't it. And then he went to the Levites and he said, not because you're priest, priest, 
but because you're going to spend your life giving me the lamb. Yep. Amen. You are now my firstborn. <laughs> so, uh, talk about reversal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Way more than reversal. Right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your son. We thank you for your heart. We thank you that we can glimpse into it, that we can be brought by the Holy Spirit to begin to understand the true issues of your heart and therefore the true issues of your son. We ask you for the allowance of the Holy Spirit, if it please you, if it, if it reaches your heart to allow the Spirit of God to truly move deeply upon us during these days here in Ireland, to truly uh, uh, break something of our religious patterns and to move us into life patterns by by the Lamb of God. Father, I just thank you that this is your heart and this is your plan and Lord, we just release you to do as you please beyond our words, yes, Lord. beyond anything that we could ask or think. Yes, yes. And we ask you to do it to the glory of Jesus and, yes, and to honor Jesus and to, the, yeah. to, 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 to have him as sweet incense out of this group yes, as we seek you and as we show our love to you. We ask it in his name. Amen. Um, so, guys, I, I think that you know the word was precious tonight. There was a lot of you can turn your thing off, Caitlin. There was a lot of heart things, and um, just want to encourage you. You know, if if you want to linger in the presence of the Lord, you can do that. And that may that may involve going off somewhere alone, not off the property and not by yourself, but. Um, staying in here, um, taking a walk in the yard. Um, you don't have to do that, but digestion is good, isn't it? And just sometimes lingering in his presence, Amen. absorbing what he wants to say. Um, that's not a rule and that's not a legalistic activity. It's something of the heart, but I, I want to open that channel of communion with the Lord now if, that's, if you feel that. Uh, and I'm not asking you to be religious at all, but just with him, lingering, lingering. You know, what's released isn't just a teaching. And the very core of this teaching was the beginning of the end was when it just was knowledge, when Adam and Eve made it just a knowing mm-hmm. and not a life. Mm-hmm. And we can see tremendously deep things in the Word and have brain, but mind-bending revelations from the Scriptures. Mm-hmm. But there's an essence that's released out of a crushed and crucified being that's inside of us that requires more than, than uh, hearing something but, but drinking and eating and partaking of deeply within us. And so just be, be sensitive to the heart of the Lord. Mm-hmm. And, um, and just a, a final thought comes to me. May our satisfaction not come um, from us getting a good meal tonight. But may we seek to reach his heart. Okay? One of the reasons we're on this island is because a people group in the history of the generations after Noah, you know, wanted to reach his heart. Okay? You're here. Because in this generation, there's the potential for it reaching his heart. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. And we are, you know, I am, and it's so easy to be quickly absorbed in the atmosphere of the room, in an ark, and in a total environment, in the environment of the room. The people in the room the chemistries of the people in the room. The chemistry of what's going on inside of us. But there is something being released that's supposed to be an environment inside of us and here that we are responsible for. To find his heart and draw from that and bring that in here. You know, and bring that in here, right here. And 
that takes time with him. It takes time, not just hearing a preaching that's straight out of the heart of God. And we're so blessed. We need to get that in us. And that's, that's, that's part of the beauty of what God's giving us in an environment is to find the Lord. I, I don't have the words for it, but um, linger in his presence and drink the spirit of this thing in and press into his bosom and find and start eating and drinking. You'll find the Lord. Find the Lord. And if you're going through something where you're broken and you failed, then look into his eyes. Find the grace of his son who tasted death. Find the Lord. Seek him beyond your satisfaction of being somebody and saying something deep and seeing something spiritual and having some comment or some writing. You know what I mean? Let's be a generation that seeks his heart and isn't satisfied Amen. till he gets his son. Amen. Can we can we raise that standard? Yes. Can we? Can we put to death everything in us that would violate that standard? Can we begin to apply it with our own hands? Can we say, Lord, it's not enough, these things that have been okay. It's not enough. It's not enough for you. And when the real comes, you know, it's not a deep teaching. It's not what we know. It's not what we can share. It's not what we can do. But it's an essence and a spirit that we've received. That's the only one that's going to make a difference to the Father. So I'm just saying this is what I need. I'm saying it from brokenness and emptiness and need. But I, I want to enter in with you guys. I want to come. And this is our time for it to be his time. Let's not... Let's not oh. Let's get the Lord. Let's get him in the way he's calling us. Amen. Amen. Let's press past ourselves and find him. And just a final thought. He pressed past all that to get us on the cross. And we can never do that. We can partake it, but we can press into him to get him. We can press past everything to get him. Everything. Find his heart, amen. All of them failed him, but Noah pressed past it all and found him. Don't you want that generation to live in the eyes of God through the sun? So let's just not waste a heartbeat of this precious word and spirit that's being released in our generation. Let's not waste it, amen. Let our hearts rise to the call and hear what the Spirit's wanting to do in us for Jesus and through Him. Amen. Amen. So feel free to be with the Lord. That doesn't You don't have to stay here. You can. You don't have to. But just as your heart desires, let's, let's press in. Let's press in. Amen. Something I noticed that some of you are doing, which is really good. I noticed that as the sharing's going forth, that you... You, something of the Lord will hit you and you will bow and just pray immediately. You, you want to, you don't want it to slip by, mm-hmm. you know. And it's, it is good to jot stuff down. I think it's really, really good. But th- I think to add this, if you're not already doing it, to if something really hits you, just bow your head and just get with the Lord a little bit over that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and because the, it's on you at that moment. The heart of it, of what hits you, is on you at that moment. And it doesn't have to be a long prayer. It just has to be a heart prayer to Him. And I, and I just think it makes a difference along the way. Mm-hmm. So anyway, if you're not already doing that, consider that. Mm-hmm.